Earthmen answers to the monastery of Panamitis. Moni Panamitis answers the drifter, Earthman. The carpenter recognizes Earthman from the harbor. He is the Afmaricano who wants to make baby with the uh, Australian with freckles. He is the only non-Greek native on the island. Moni Barno Mamitis Makria Makria. The monastery is far away, warns Stephanos, waving his hand, seriously worried. Until the carpenter pauses, he looks more deeply into the eyes of Earthmen and sees the rare glimmer of a natural spiritual man. The two men gaze at one another in a silent pause of recognition. They understand they are brothers in spirit. The carpenter touches his heart. He whispers his blessing. Excellent, my fine child. Travel well. <laughs> Bravo. Bidaikimo. Stokalo. Cleopatra is experiencing a wet retrospective in her imagination and body. She feels to be alone for the first time in two weeks unsettles me. I firmly decide on extra laziness as the theme of my day. Play it safe. Languidly, I finger myself in bed during my erotic remembrance of when Earthman, my boy, conquered my life. The dawn of my goddess liberation begins when Earthman straggles back into Lindos after a marathon month walkabout around the South Island, mysterious, lost South Island of Rhodes. And after hanging out with Manolis, and uh, Greeks in uh, Siana Highland Village. Look what the cat dragged in. <laughs> I laugh as I embrace him, pressing my breast deeply into his chest. We sit down in the courtyard doorway and hold hands for the first time. I'm excited to welcome this intense, bedraggled poet into my home. Uh, again, I have a little guest room. Earthman gives me the peace sign and sleeps through the afternoon. At sunset, Earthman appears in the kitchen when he smells my gourmet dinner that I have lovingly cooked for him. Chicken casserole, baked eggplant, Greek salad, white wine from Embonas, and uh, kick-ass hashish from Pakistan. He hugs me. He is so mellow. 
spiritually charged when he re-emerges from his remote solo walks around the isolated places on robes. On this mellow evening, he eloquently praises my chicken and baked eggplant. While I'm washing the dishes, Earthman stands on the kitchen table for a stage and theatrically reads his fresh penned poem. My current live-in boyfriend, Snake, however, seems naturally uptight. Snake could take or, or leave my gourmet cooking. He prefers to drink in the tavernas of Rodostown, where he provokes brawls and smashes up the place. Snake has a problem with anger and violence. Snake did not pass the acid test. Snake never became a hippie. He considers me good for only one thing. Fortunately, Snake is carousing again in Rhodes tonight. This frees me to hang out in peace with my intriguing, enigmatic house guest. Wow. Goddess Earthy keeps enjoying Cleopatra's body as she narrates Cleopatra's words. Late at night, an unexpected, amorous episode transforms my life. Earthman wakes up. He hears animal sounds coming from the bedroom, my bedroom. Sounds to him as if Snake is physically attacking me. Enough is enough. Earthman, Earthman bursts into my bedroom to rescue me. But, oops. Snake and I are making love abandonedly. Mm -hmm. Oops. Earthman awkwardly excuses himself, sheepishly withdrawing and closing the doors to my bedroom. This botched rescue deeply upsets him. Hmm. To restore his cool, Earthman meditates on the sheepskin rug on the pebble stone floor. He fills his pipe with strong silver crescent hashish. He inhales the potent drug and reflects about the Vietnam juggernaut or machine that he is running away from. He gets a hard-on recalling his LSD-fueled orgy with two crazy Dutch chicks at the haunted Stag Chalet in the heartland of the island. He smiles when he reminisces about his heartwarming sleepover with the family of Manolis in the slum shanties around Rosetown. But the essential focus of his meditation, Earthman feels his Greek stepping stone pilgrimage across these Dodecanese islands um, on his pilgrimage to India has become super comprehensible, hyper-fulfilled, and absolutely incorporated within his body, cells, and thighs. 
his son Anmon are both in Aries. Earthman is restless. He hears the irresistible siren call of exploration enticing him to travel along that fabled hashish trail towards India and to the highest Himalayas whence to discover a snow cave to meditate in for 10 years. Earthman experiences a profound hashish revelation, rush, that he must walk to Afghanistan tonight? Yes, he must find the Hashishan Trail to Kabul, and he means right now. The second? His breath? You better believe it. This Afghan vision inspires Earthmen to walk to the beach in the dark, in the rain, promptly now, so he can throw his insignificant objects into the Aegean Ocean. He begins to gather his possessions. 